everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of Astronomy for Beginners. Now I'm going to cover something on this video guide is uh, DSLR cameras or uh, if you're owner of a CCD or CMOS camera like this one. You may have come across this before and you're just wondering what the hell has happened here. Now as you're taking images of your, using your DSLR or, or your CCD or CMOS camera you'll probably find out that as you're imaging your pictures, your planets or your, ne or your nebula or your, or your deep sky objects you, you're imaging you notice some very weird uh, artifacts in your images and it's usually uh, these images are like uh, donut shapes or round black dots or grey dots that's in within the image and you wonder yourself, well, how come I've got all this? How come I've got this in my images? So, you check your telescope and you check the optics and you still think, well, my optics are clean. I've got no dust particles. And then you start to proceed further. You check your eyepieces and then you check your, uh, your uh, camera or CCD. And you look at the you look at the lens and you look at the things and you think, well, there's nothing there. So what can be the problem? So in this video guide, I'm going to illustrate what is the problem, how can you resolve this problem, and uh, what equipment you're going to be required to be able to um, do the job in hand. And basically, what the problem is is that you got dust particles that's on your DSLR or on your CCD uh, sensor. Now, if it gets onto the sensor, it requires uh, a lot more uh, special care and attention to clean these particular um, uh, these sensors because they're so delicate, because it's electronics as well, you do not want to risk uh, scratching the, the sensor and damaging it. Now, you can find ways to eliminate the artifacts in the images by taking flat frames, but sometimes when you're imaging uh, for some time or you're taking the pictures, sometimes taking flats might not be necessary and you might be losing more time than you should. And also a bit of a pain in the backside to get it set up for taking flats. So, to this video guide, I'm going to show you how can you clean your sensors on your DSLR cameras and your CCDs or CMOS cameras. And I'm going to go through various safety aspects of how to do it. I'm going to show you the, the, the equipment or tools you're going to need to do it. And the one simple uh, thing about this, it's not difficult, but a bit of care and patience you will eliminate the problem. It's just the, you just need to take a bit of time and carefully, as you're cleaning the, uh, the components of your DSLR sensors or your cameras, so that you get rid of this, this dust artifacts. Now, I'm going to show you a few techniques that I use. Some might be, uh, you probably already know, and some you might not know. But I'm going to highlight for you guys who have never cleaned a sensor and believe it or not, it's not as, as simple as just cleaning a telescope uh, optics of a telescope or a mirror or whatever it is. This does take a bit of care and precision when you're cleaning out the sensor. And it's not always going to guarantee that when you clean it, it's going to be clean again. You may have to do it several times to get rid of these dust artifacts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an image of these dust particles and how it affects uh, your, um, your photographs. So here's an image of M31 Andromeda Galaxy. In this picture, this is a stacked image and this was taken with my 80mm ED refractor. Now. Can anyone spot the uh, the dust particle within this image? Have you spotted it yet? 
If I move the, my cursor, you'll see there is a, a, a black dot in the, uh, in the picture. And it looks like as if it's out of place. But this is a dust particle that's got trapped into the, the sensor of your camera. And that's what happens. Now, this is just a mild case. But I've seen uh, a lot of images with loads of these uh, particles. And they can ruin the image. Now this is just a minor defect, this is what we're trying to achieve, to eliminate uh, these dust particles and get rid of them in our, uh, on our sensors of our cameras. So this is the reason why we're doing this. These foreign bodies do not ruin your pictures from minutes to even hours of exposure times. Collecting this data and find yourself the images getting ruined by these horrible uh, foreign bodies in the images. So what we're going to do now, I will now show you what equipment and tools you're going to need to undertake and resolve this big problem. The first cleaning device is this. This is your good old hurricane blower. This is the first uh, point of call for cleaning any sensors of your cameras very very good device very cheap cost around about five to six pounds and basically these hurricane blowers will give you enough ample to blow off all that excessive dust off your sensors and the good thing about using this blow brush is you avoid contact with the sensor so you risk damaging it uh, if you're getting a bit clumsy and all that, a good blow of air gets most of the dust particles away from the sensors. This will be the first point of call before you even attempt to go even further. Is do not use uh, your so you've probably seen them. Uh, you see aerosol cans which have uh, compressed air, and these compressed aerosol cans uh, are also very good at removing dust. But I would not recommend using uh, air dust or air dust uh, spray cans because what will happen is yes it will remove the dust but the big problem is the actual agent, the, the actual compressed gas itself that provides the pressure for the can or the gases uh, that which will more likely to stain that sensor. So do not use these compressed gas sprays to get rid of the dust because you might end up spraying some of that propellant gas onto the sensor and then you, you then stain the uh, actual sensor. And then as well as not just dust you've got, you also got uh, stains. And stains are an absolute nightmare to clean sensors. Now sensors are a lot more uh, a lot more delicate than your even for your Newtonian uh, mirror telescopes, because the sensors uh, any slight damage onto there w will affect the electronics of the camera. So be warned when you're using if it's a bare sensor. Avoid contact using a camel hairbrush or one of those lens pens. Do not use a lens pen or camel hairbrush onto a bare sensor. So your, your DSLR cameras or your, uh, or your camel hairbrushes, you might scratch the actual sensor itself. So avoid using camel hairbrushes or lens pens. Always use this first. Use the hurricane blower. If the dust is still persistent to the sensor, then you try and clean it by all means by keep uh, blowing the dust and as much as you can. If it hasn't been removed, then proceed further. Now, as I mentioned before, in many me guides, you can use the optical wonder cleaner fluid and a good old uh, actual cloth itself, the actual magic cloth. Now the Wonder Cleaning Fluid is good for 
cameras that have the the clear glass protection over the sensor so using these cleaning methods is absolutely fine for this type of camera because it has the uh, the clear glass okay so you can get where we're using the clear glass to clean the sensor that way all right but it must have the clear glass if it doesn't have the clear glass then I would not recommend cleaning the bare sensor with this all right not recommended because again sensors are, are very delicate and again this will scratch those sensors plus any moisture that gets into the electronics especially this I know this is alcohol uh, sort of base but again it's got moisture and you don't want to mix electronics with moisture no go so again only use a little bit of a spray actually on the clear glass of this type so again if it's this type with the bare sensor do not use this method all right so if it's a bare sensor and again like this one don't use that method at all the next uh, device you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of a decent torch preferably a decent halogen or LED torch all right something that's quite bright because you need to get as much uh, of the uh, the light as possible so that you'll be able to see the debris you're then going to need uh, devices like these these are, uh, are eyepiece loop sets basically these are what jewelers uh, use uh, these are very good and what these will do is will help magnify the particularly on small sensors or DSLR camera uh, sensors and will enable you to see the actual dust particles a lot closer uh, this will become apparent these cost around about five to six pounds for a, a small set like these and these give out very modifications of five to seven to ten times modification these are very good very cheap and do the, the do the job as necessary and uh, this will come apparent when i show you how to clean the actual dslr all right and you'll see how useful they are so a decent torch and some kind of method of modification now it comes into the the last part and basically this is a kit that I bought on Amazon now this is the APS sensor C sensor cleaning swab kit that will able to remove dust and grime on the sensors now this is a very good quality uh, swab kit now avoid knockoffs get something that's recommended or highly recommended for uh, DSLR cameras or CMOS chips all right so get something like this this is a VS go uh, product and it's been trialed and tested and proven to work on a lot of DSLR or sensors or CCD sensors this is the APS-C sensor which basically these are good for sensors of around 12 to 16 millimeter um, sensors so so basically for people that own uh, cameras that are not full size now like this one like the EOS 1100 all the way down to a 600D uh, this cleaning kit is more than ad adequate now if you've got a full frame uh, sensor kit then you have to get the full frame sensor cleaning swab kit this is usually an orange packet and it will tell you to get the uh, the full sensor cleaning kit if you've got cameras that are a lot more specialized but for general use uh, entry level cameras uh, or DSLR cameras then the APS uh, C sensor cleaning swab is more than I could also because of its size this is ideal for uh, a, a lot of medium size uh, 
CCD chips as well. So again, this costs around about seven pounds from Amazon, but uh, it comes with a pack of ten. And again, I will show you uh, how you use this kit in conjunction on cleaning the, the dust off the, the sensors of your cameras. So again, buy a very good quality swab kit. There are a lot of knockoffs out there, but if they're too cheap, never scrimp on buying things too cheap because you want the best cleaning products around. There are different swab kits out there. There are some with like an alcohol uh, solution that you apply to, which you can apply to the sensors and all that. But personally, I rather get a swab kit that's a sealed because basically these swabs are wrapped in a, uh, a wrapper and they are well protected so they're less likely to have a contamination with dust or dirt and all that these are sealed items so when you once you've used the swab so what we're going to do now we're going to take a closer look now on the methods of cleaning a DSLR camera after that we will then proceed further on cleaning a, a CCD camera. Certain precautions when you clean your DSLR camera is to remove the, uh, the lens. Now put the, the lens to one side and as you're checking you notice that the, the viewfinder uh, mirror is in the way. You can't actually physically see the chip. Now, depending on your camera, to get the chip, uh, to get the the sensor exposed. Now, on this one, I basically I switch it on, and I set a timer, and I click this button here, which is like, uh, if you see the button here, I click this button here. Basically, it puts uh, the camera exposed. Now, on some Nikon's and on some cameras. There's, you, there's usually is a, a clean uh, facility that allows you to clean the, uh, the camera so that you can uh, clean the chip or the sensor without the, the viewfinder flipping down. To see the, uh, the sensor, you shine a torch, a bright torch, over and you can just see the sensor exposed. Okay, now uh, as you can see here, um, that's the sensor. It looks clean, but is it? Any microscopic dust gets on there will show up on your images. Even though it looks absolutely clean on the sensor itself, believe me, there will be specks of dust in there. Somehow it's got through. And basically, I will show you the process on how where you can trace these dust particles so all i'm doing is 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 it is basically going through uh, a little quick guide how to get the the sensor exposed on your camera now the nikons have a self uh, have a cleaning facility button so you select on the menu screen and you set the camera to cleaning mode and basically what that does it flips the the the, the mirror flip of the viewfinder so to allow the CCD to be, or this, to allow the sensor to be exposed so you can clean it. So this is how you would do it. Now if you, once you've cleaned the, the, uh, the sensor, you basically, def, uh, to, switch, to switch it back on, uh, on this camera, you click, uh, press this button here, which is the viewfinder button, and basically it will basically flip back round and then it will show you the uh, the view mirror finder uh, covering up the camera. Okay, so we'll go into a little more closer detail on how to clean the DSLR, but I need to cover uh, more aspects of the cameras itself. So basically, we'll put the the lens uh, back in, so to cover it up and prevent any more dust from getting into the camera itself. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I did highlight a few precautions when you're cleaning CCDs or CMOS cameras. I'm going to go through 
few variety of my own CCDs and CMOS cameras and they're all different in different designs and different uh, setups. First off we're going to go off with my good old QHY 8L. This is a CCD deep sky uh, wide field uh, uh, camera. Now again using a strong light you can you can see, I expose the CCD. Now as you notice there is a, a clear uh, actual pane of glass that covers this, the actual chip itself. Now you usually that glass will prevent that uh, CCD from developing dust and, and provide very good protection. The, the main problem with these CCDs is usually when you've got a a clear glass film like that that's protecting the, the actual sensor itself means it could be sealed with a, a certain um, additive or gas that's in there in the chamber to protect the CCD. Now when I'm seeing uh, a certain gas it's usually purged with uh, a nitrogen now this nitrogen will prevent uh, the, the actual CCD from freezing up and also aids um, to prevent moisture from getting into the sensor and the electronics. Now this is a sealed unit de uh, device and the, clear uh, the actual clear glass that's protecting that sensor um, will give very good protection. Now, I would be very, very careful if you do try, usually, to clean this CCD, you can get away with just using a blow brush or a lens pen brush, a camel brush, to clean the glass itself. However, if you do get uh, dust particles at the other end, then it may be a good idea to inform the actual manufacturer and ask them to see if it's not going to invalidate the camera. Now not all QHYs uh, have a sealed design. Now I believe that this one can be stripped out but it has to be purged with uh, nitrogen once you break the seal. Usually when they're sealed the variety like this they usually don't suffer from dust at all. In fact dust is virtually impossible in getting in there so in a way in a quick way to clean it is just best to use a good to use a good old lens pen brush or blow brush to rough uh, some of the lint and because of the lens because of the clear glass you can um, you can still clean it as a telescope uh, uh, lenses and basically using a good quality optical uh, cleaning solution and a good um, cloth cleaning cloth like something like a optical wonder uh, cloth or cleaning solution which is the best ones to use so that's usually what you can get away with this type of camera however not all cameras have this clear glass as I will show you now Now this is another CCD. This is the QHY5. It's a very, it's a, it's an old camera, but it's a very good auto guider. Now once we take the nose piece off, and I mean it has no clear glass. Basically, the actual CCD chip is exposed, and because it's exposed, this will more likely to get the dust on there. Now just be careful when you're cleaning uh, exposed sensor is that have you noticed at the corner of here you see like uh, if you see closer up you see like a bit of circuit uh, connections within the actual chip itself and you've got to be very careful when you're cleaning your uh, sensor on this particular camera but again because it's a guider it's not really crucial uh, so even if I do get a few dust particles on this uh, 
CCD it's not to worry because I'm using this as a guide camera so but you may find uh, CCDs or CMOS cameras that has this design all right where the actual sensor is exposed there is no clear glass so usually nine times out of ten you can just quite simply just uh, using the cleaning method I'll show you later on as easy as anything again with the QHY 8 this has a clear glass this one doesn't we're going to proceed to another camera this is a planetary camera this is an old planetary camera now and uh, basically this is the QHY IMG 132 uh, now this one has a built-in nose piece it also has an IR cut filter which usually will protect the uh, sensor from dust from the developing now usually again if you do get artifacts it's best to clean the IR filter itself all right and it's quite simply just uh, unscrew it uh, using a lens pen or using cleaning solution it's best to clean both sides uh, once that's done you just then screw it back on in in place and then try again if you still get artifacts then then the actual artifacts are way past the uh, the IR filter so if you take the filter apart now this one is a little bit difficult to get to because the nose piece is fixed there are screws at either end around this nose piece so using a screwdriver to um, take these screws out and then enable you to take out the uh, the nose piece now if you look closely inside there there are uh, four other screws inside now this is just a like a shield guard and it has a glass film luckily this camera can be uh, taken apart so you take those screws off and the shield part comes off and what will happen then you will give you access to the actual sensor itself so again this is another design but this with this with this type of design you have to strip out certain components to get to the sensor again this is achievable I've I've cleaned the uh, dust bunnies off this camera before and it's very simple just take the four screws and the four screws at the back and then you should be able to get to the sensor without no problems so usually by buying an IR cut filter over your existing uh, camera usually prevent, prevents a lot of this uh, dust collection into your camera and you don't have any of these problem arise so by acquiring an IR cut filter if your camera doesn't have one it's best to get one not only if it increases the sensitivity of your camera but also acts like a dust shield I have uh, the Orion G3 camera it does have a, a filter which also protects the, the chip but usually if you take the nose piece out and we take a closer look as you can see this camera does have a glass and it protects the, uh, the actual camera itself however if you look closely there is a, a, a basically a clamping device here uh, two little recess slots basically that's a lock screw that holds the clear glass housing into there so it basically acts like a, a protective uh, shield for the sensor now the main problem with these devices is you can strip it out you may need to inform the manufacturer if this camera if if this camera is got uh, nitrogen purge uh, gases within the the chamber of the CCD so very also just make sure before you start uh, taking this apart is to consult the manufacturers 
Now usually this can be taken apart easily but you need a specialized tool to unclip it to uh, slacken this uh, this lock ring it's very it's very crucial that you uh, use the proper tool because if you don't you may scratch the actual um, clear glass and damage it or worse comes to the effect you might break it so a specialized tool is, is required to take off this ring now usually using two screwdrivers two uh, very small screwdrivers you'll be able to unlock unlock this ring and get to the sensor I mean it looks sealed to me and then we're going to proceed on to the uh, on the zoo ASI 120 MC whereas we take the nose piece off now unlike many of the zoo ASI's 120's a lot of them on the older models did actually have a uh, a lock ring similar to the ones you got to the uh, the Orion uh, G3 camera unfortunately on this newer one there is actually no lock ring so basically there is an IR filter in this uh, camera and again you still see the, 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 the actual sensor itself but because of that uh, this is actually fixed and which tells me that this is actually a sealed, completely sealed unit. Now, if you do get dust particles in this camera, it's more than likely that this could be sealed with nitrogen as well. So be very, very careful if you do get dust particles. Have a go at cleaning the actual, uh, the clear glass in front of it. But if that's not the case, then it might be a dust particles actually on the sensor. Now, I can't find any ways of stripping this out. It seems to be a completely uh, sealed unit all, all the way around. Uh, from the look of it, you could I could actually twist this round, this, uh, this, this cap here around. But it doesn't want to budge. Now, if I do have dust particles, then I may be able to clear, uh, clean the uh, actual glass itself. If there's any dust particles in the sensor itself, then I need to inform Zoo uh, about this. Uh, I've never come across this type of camera to not have this this uh, this lock ring, which something tells me automatically. That this might be a sealed design and may or more likely to contain the actual uh, the nitrogen inside to prevent the the moisture and and the dust and all that involved do not start stripping out components out when if you're if you're gonna do something like that you're gonna do more damage than good so now usually a lot of the CCDs if you strip out components then you are required to uh, repurge the the nitrogen into these cameras. Uh, if that camera if that gas does ex escape from these cameras then this will uh, pr uh, this will reduce the performance of the camera you will get moisture in the camera and with that moisture, particular if you're using cooling devices like this one's fitted here, then with that gas inside, um, because the cooling and all that will freeze up. Now that gas will prevent moisture and stop uh, freezing the, the system up. So be very, very careful when you get cameras that are a sealed unit like this. I believe the attic CCD cameras are exactly the same they're all they are also a sealed design unit so it's not advised that to strip any of these cameras apart so right everyone we're going to start on the uh, cleaning procedure of your CCD or your DSLR camera and first stop is what we're going to do first is 
the accessories that I advise you or recommend to get is get your DSLR or CCD take out any lenses and basically what we're going to do is we're going to expose the, the sensor which I'll show you later on how to set this up on this camera be warned that all, not all cameras work the same way as this so please refer to your manual instructions of your existing model of your camera so basically I'll set it up so my sensor is exposed now this is going to sound ridiculous I'm going to look like uh, some kind of mad scientist get yourself a, a bright torch, a head torch get your uh, little monocular around about 5 to 7 times magnification is all you need all right and then what you're going to do is to confirm that you've got some dust particles on your sensor you then quickly grab the monocular um, tilt the light to one side uh, and then just carefully scan across right until you start to see any speck of dust and what will happen is as you shine the light and you move your head around and you move the camera around it's best to move the camera bit by bit so that you can uh, get to see it clearly you'll see the speck of dust show up instantly and it'll give you a position where where the more the dust you can clean right that will confirm if you've got dust now if the torch isn't bright enough Alternatively, uh, use a brighter torch, okay, and then shine across that way. Now, if you if you're gonna just get your uh, monocular, and again, get a brighter torch, and just scan for any dust particles. And believe me, yeah, I've got one or two specks there, right on the left hand. Right on the left hand bottom of the, the sensor. So, what we're going to do now, now we've confirmed there's dust on the, the sensor itself, we then need to clean it. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a close look how to do that. Right, so I've got my Canon 1100D. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera so that I can able to flip the mirror and expose the the sensor and to do this we switch her on on the side like so it will give me uh, this um, screen now it doesn't matter what screen it's set but what I will do is I carefully unlock the lens okay we've got the viewfinder mirror exposed all right so you can't see the sensor we're going to turn it around and we're going to look at the screen itself okay and on that screen is we're going to press this this button here which is the uh, the sensor flip okay and it gives you that screen now the problem with this camera it has a set timer and with this set timer it will then switch off onto auto shut mode and it will switch off all the power and flip the, the mirror back right, I'm going to flip it, flip it back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into menu by pressing menu at this bottom here so what we're going to do on this menu is we click the arrow button here and you scroll down different features Right, and you're going to flick through till you get to one of the features on here and basically where the auto power off button it's already highlighted so we scroll down using the arrow keys and we select auto power off we click on set and it gives us the time frame to uh, when the shutter uh, switches off Okay, uh, you can either set it for 15 
or you can sw switch it off off so basically I'm going to set on to off and basically now what this will do is that the camera now with this sensor is now exposed we're going to ha come out to the menu screen this camera now will not shut off all right at the moment the viewfinder is down okay so we're going to flip her up by pressing this button here this 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 button here on this side okay and the good indication is you can see for your uh, viewfinder that is now the camera set to uh, clean so now once you've located the dust using that method i just showed you you're now ready to clean the sensor you tilt the camera down and upside down and basically you just blow the camera you know with decent amount of uh, air on there and you keep doing it until you think it's off usually a couple of blows that all it takes okay and basically what you do then you get your monocle now if you've got good eyesight you may might net you might be able to just uh, get away with the eyeball but again you shine the torch inside there and you check for any debris okay you check using the monocle or using your own eyes and you check all the way around the sensor all right tilt the camera side to side and just keep checking now if you can't find any dust it means you've cleaned it and there's no requirement to go any further and it's so simple as I mentioned before do not use one of these lens pens all right because in a day if you use one of these lens pens you may scratch the the sensor so even with a camel hair brush or something like that I would not recommend using any of that also your cleaning costs that you use for the cleaning the optics personally I don't use them anyway do not use any of them because you're more likely to track the dust onto the sensor and also you're going to damage some of the electronic parts inside there so keep away prevent using any of this stuff and brushes this is the number one uh, safe cleaning solution this is the first point of call you will do or carry out first before you start going to plan B now if plan A fails and you still got dust particles then you then proceed further so we put one, the camera to one side we'll then get our sensor cleaning swab kit inside the box there is a, there's 10 of these in this pack and you drag it out and this is what I meant by the swabs now these are the cleaning swabs these are well packaged which means is once you open this all right this this will be very clean and basically you'll be able to clean the the sensor very effective because it's it's vacuum packed it's not going to um, it's not going to um, put any grease smears and all that on there or any dust particles so get a cleaning swab that's sealed up like this these are relatively expensive but they are the best one of the best ones I've I've seen for a while now once it's removed from its package this is a one use only swab so basically once you uh, wipe this clean off the sensor just once do not use it again it's one wipe per swab so once you use one swab bin this one away and use another one because what will happen if you use the same swab you're more likely to press in that dust or the dirt particles into the sensor so basically you're going to shine a torch into here you carefully put your swab inside the lens like so okay and then what you're going to do is with a nice firm but not too hard you're going to streak across like so okay all the way to the edge okay and you're going to lift off 
All right, so, and there you go. You then check your camera, and then you're going to look into the sensor, like so. You teach checking using your monocle, using the magnification to zoom in, check for any debris. Once you can't find any, that is it. There is no debris. That sensor is now clean. You then remove the before you install the the camera back with its lens. Usually, a lot of people forget is to clean the actual lens itself. If there's any debris in this uh, actual camera lens itself, it's be a good idea that you use your blower brush, like so. Use your blow brush and just blow some of the remaining dust off the other side of the lens. You then check again, okay, and all the remaining blow, uh, dust is uh, extracted from the lens itself, on the camera lens, and then you then lock the camera in place. The camera now sets its viewfinder mirror. And then what you're going to do is now you can either leave the function on because basically it won't switch it itself off until you switch it off manually. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through by pressing menu, selecting the power off, press select, uh, press set, and then click on whatever timer you want that camera to switch off. Okay, so the last setting we had was 50 minutes, so we set our 50 minutes auto power off. Personally, I will leave it off. Uh, I'll leave it on the setting off anyway. And basically, what you do is you, when you do um, set your camera, uh, you want it so it doesn't auto power off anyway. Because if you're taking long exposures of the deep sky objects through your telescope, you don't want the camera to switch off. So set it to set on to off anyway. Okay, and then that's basically click out the menu, press the menu button. Okay, and then switch off the, the camera. That is now your camera sensor, now fully cleaned, ready to go. And that's basically all it is for DSLR camera. Now, using the blow brush, using these uh, moist, dry, uh, wet swabs is all you really need for DSLR. So when you're cleaning the sensor, that is the process you will carry out. That's it. There is nothing to it. There's no need to go mental on it. Right? You do not need to go absolutely mental. But again, for your camera lenses, that's a different cleaning process. So I would suggest that you refer to my uh, video guide on how to clean uh, telescope uh, lenses or, or eyepieces. So refer to those video guides because they were uh, basically cleaning camera lenses is exactly the same as, as cleaning a telescope. So that's all there is to it. That is, a, that is so simple to use. Now one key word was I did mention before. This is a one use, one application, one use uh, swab. Now some people will sweep it across to one side and go back on itself. Believe me, I do not like that uh, process at all. I believe that there is just one application, so you do one sweep only. Okay, so you do one sweep and then do again uh, on another swab. It may, it may cost you some money, uh, extra uh, pence just to uh, waste another swab. But I'd rather waste another swab than pressing on uh, and dirtying that sensor even more. And as you can see, if you look closely, you may be able to find some dust particles that's still left on there. And, and again, once the swab is used, you then throw it away. Do not use it on any other applications. So, and that's how you clean a DSLR sensor. Now, 
like with DSLRs, this is this can be achieved uh, uh, cleaning the same principle with your CCD or CMOS chips. Now this is uh, the actual sensor that's that's bare. There is no glass element. Now, as I remember, as I mentioned before, you've got to be careful when you're using swabs. All right, because of the uh, because of the, the the contacts, electronic contacts within that sensor, you don't want to um, to damage uh, those uh, electrical parts within that chip. And you can see uh, the actual chip itself with those electrical uh, parts connected to it. And again, it's the same process as the DSLR using the bro using the blow brush like so as many times as you want the more the merrier loads of blows and there you go you then check again using your monocle now using the monocle is very crucial on this type of uh, on this type of sensor because it's really tiny so you need the modification to zoom in so as you zoom in uh, you check again if there's any fragments of dust try again by all means just keep doing it if all that fails then you go to the swab method but be warned this swab is too big for that sensor so what if you're going to clean a CC a tiny CCD or a tiny CMOS uh, sensor then you need to use smaller swabs and the smaller swabs are usually you can get smaller than this all right this is just suited for um, half scale uh, DSLR cameras so but you can get swabs that are even smaller than this and it's the same process you strike it across once throw that swab away and use another swab uh, you can back yourself back but I don't really like doing that because you might press the, the dust particles in there and scratch the sensor so to be honest with you I, wait, I rather prefer you to waste another swab to do another another sweep but one sweep blue or not does all blue or not and it's the best thing ever and you know for a pack of 10 swabs that cost 6 quid I rather waste 6 quid then 300 or 400 pounds on a camera and risk damaging it so swabs are easy to replace you just throw one and get yourself another one right and just and use that one once that's used that's it now your cameras are clean your sensors are now free from uh, all the dust particles and dirt from your sensors I hope this guide has helped you massively to overcome a lot of your issues regarding uh, this certain type of problem. Please feel free to comment on our video guide. Keep posting those great images. Uh, again, thanks for your support to Astronomy for Beginners. And look forward to another video guide from me again. So, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And clear skies.